Invisible. Little comment. No comment. She exists. Guys, what are you looking for? No, I'm not a real. Ah, wait, wait. Like, comment, subscribe. Stop a girl. Mood. Hi. 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 So far, how was how's the day? Ah, it has been a beautiful experience. We got to read about David and. Uh, when we, he was taking the the altar from to to his to his house, so it was a beautiful message by Pastor Mutwakai, and I really enjoyed it. What are you looking forward to in the afternoon? I'm looking forward to resting because I haven't rested the whole week. I've been preparing, and it it has been a mess. But God's got us, so I, I'm looking forward to rest. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, hello. Thank you. I guess it goes with the preparation. Oh, I think yeah, that yeah, will yeah. also be good. I knew that I was going to be doing this thing. So I need tips of being a good in Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So I then, I then prepared and I was able to, to pull it off. So I'm grateful to God. Ooh, okay. What's your highlight of the day? Hmm. My highlight of the day. I think. It's, I think it's the singing, the divine service. Yeah. The divine service was definitely out of the world. So that's my highlight of the day. Um, hearing Mother Maun praise him for the first time live. Yeah. Oh, really? So, oh. hey, hmm, get blown away. Get blown yeah. away. So I think that's definitely my highlight of the sermon and everything. Just that time. Okay, I can't right. say my time because I was blowing my own horn. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe it was somebody else's favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I was just there like, come on. Open it. King is on me. So that's it. And she's very day. Yeah, I'm out of here. She's awesome. She's very much. Thank you very, very much. much. And as a church, as a body of Christ, it is important that we are that for one another. We as Christians first need to learn to trust the process. I, I say this hating these very words that I'm saying because I'm saying that now in a state of peace. But when I'm in the midst of trial and tribulation and those words come to my mind, those aren't the words that, you know, those aren't the words that come to play. So my question then is, how, 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 can we, how can we teach people, or how can we sensitize people to the, to the reality that success and, and, and excellence in life is not, is not as pretty, pretty as it seems? Yeah. As you see me here, you don't know how, how hard I have to toil every night, working tireless hours to become the person that you guys see here today. You know? yeah. So I, I wonder how, how we can get people out of, out of this, 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 this imagination, this dream that things would come easy. I look at Mr. Lopan and what he's been able to succeed in. I, how are you? I am blessed, especially as Pentecostals. I am blessed and highly favored. Mm -hmm. Then after this, you don't have combi money to go home. Yeah. Then you are shy that people are going to drive. Instead of asking for a lift, you are shy they're going to say, ah, blessed, highly favored. You, the same one who's standing, don't have combi money. So it is through events like this year where you allow people to share their experiences. And when you see their journey over the years, where they tell you not only about the highs, but the lows. I mean, I lost my, my younger brother. He was uh, 31, had three young kids. Uh, he, he passed to cancer in 2016. In 2017, my mom passed away, breast cancer. So you can imagine two years in a row, you have this death in the family. And then you have this person who's always talking about God, say, but what sin have you committed? 
Then I remind them of Job. Remember, Job never did anything wrong. Job was there living his life praising God, and it was a discussion in the heaven. In the SDA, they know the Bible well, but the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit is not there. And today I'm going to go back and tell them that, hey, I experienced the move of the Holy Spirit. And let me share this. Your pastors might be upset with me. When the Lord comes back, He's not coming back for a denomination. So just because you're SDA, it doesn't mean you're going to heaven. He's coming for a remnant, a remnant who in their hearts are after Him. So here to answer your question now, how do we get people to understand that it's a journey, it's a process, it is through events like this year. And giving enough time for people to be vulnerable. You see, what we like doing as Christians is to put on a facade because you feel if you don't put on this facade, people will say, but where is your God that you always talk about? Because at the end of it, that's when you'll hear exactly what an amazing God we serve. That as we go through these trials and tribulations, we are being refined. Amen. Does God tell you, for example, in the case of Isaac, Isaac wanted to go to Egypt, like some of us want to go to the UK. And God says, no, uh, don't go to Egypt. Stay here. You are going to make money. And he stayed there and he made money where there was a family. So, does God speak to us and give us direction, not in a way that you convince yourself that, I think this is God speaking. God. No, does God speak when it comes to business? God speaks all the time. Hallelujah. Business is but one area where you have been placed, unless you are saying as Adventists, you are taught that God doesn't speak. But if you, are, if you are taught that God speaks, it doesn't matter whether it's in the workplace, it's in business, or it's in marriage. I spoke about altar. I spoke here about the family altar. Now, in my house, I'm a king and I'm a priest. I understand what that responsibility means in terms of my household, my wife and my children. In my business, the same uh, priesthood and kingship I adopt. And because I have a business altar, where I seek the Lord, I go into the closet. I don't know. I'm now speaking as me, as a non-Adventist. I, The Lord speaks to me. How does he speak to me? Through scripture sometimes. How does he speak to me? Sometimes through confirmation. Tato will call me and say something and I'm like, this is God. This is a confirmation of what the Lord said to me in the closet. So like I said, unless you say that God doesn't speak, that's a different matter. But if God speaks in other situations, he will speak to you in business. All you must do is ask. And you don't ask. When an opportunity comes, not every oppor good opportunity is a God opportunity. I have had people come and throw opportunities at me which look good. And the Lord something... Like I said, if you're a believer, you know what that something is. It's your spirit man. will be like, hey man, hey, something is... Then you hear what well, this thing started, but soon after that, the business collapsed because there was this and this and that. Then you say, thank you, Lord. You still speak to this day. Amen. Because only Christ will never lie to you. But this body, these two bodies lie to each other. Wait until there's the diabetes. And you have to be dealing with issues. Wait until there is pelvic um, inflammatory diseases and uterine one of you. Wait until there is rush after every sperm. <laughs> but wait, wait, wait. Wait until the transitions come when, when, when we are now stable and trusting and then the bank the bank figures change and the cattle are no longer given birth as they did and then the borehole is taken from you and then you no longer drive the Mercedes you used to drive and then you no longer leave the plush 
lifestyle that you used to have. But maybe while we're here on earth, it's for it's forever because it's for better for worse. The truth is, where Christ is, love stays. Yeah. And comfort and trust. And then it's all beautiful. Because you can cry on the threshing floor and say, ladies, when you come to my age, teach me how to love him more. Because I'm getting tired, Lord. But teach me how to be patient with him. Can I learn how to serve him more? How can I do it better? So that I don't get tired of ironing his shirts and doing his laundry and serving the T-bone and the vegetables. Teach me, Lord, to become better at every step. When Penny is asking, to tell you the truth, God does speak. And he can tell you about your wife. If you have good communication with God. Yeah. It's something that we need to start teaching or we need to people to know. God does what? Speak. And to tell you the truth, Job says he speaks in dreams, right? It's there in the Bible. Uh, Daniel prayed, Daniel chapter 9. And an angel tapped his shoulder and told him story and explained something. To date, we still have people who have got, who, who have angels visiting them. How can we ensure the healing and resolution of generational trauma? Oh, On the issue of generational trauma, um, other, other nationalities and other religions and, and other people um, have generational wealth. Rona as Batana, we are really not taught um, how to empower ourselves. We are a nation, I'm sure we can all agree, you are a nation that's very um, codependent and um, re re very reliant on assistance and on, on help, on handouts. Um, whether it's, it's a job, we like mediocrity, you stay at a job where you know you're not called and it's not your calling, but because at the end of the month, or nearly 15,000 Bula, um, this is your life. But you know it's not your calling, and God is constantly showing you that it's not your calling. Boiling oil is constantly poured on you, but you still stay. Mm. So how can we ensure the resolution and um, the healing of generational trauma um, from generations before Boma um, such that we build generational wealth for our children? But there are certain truths that you cannot deny. Why is it that there will be a certain family where Every child, by the time they get to form four, they fall pregnant. <laughs> Why is it that in a certain family, the child goes to university but then becomes a drunkard? <laughs> Why is it that in that you have a grandmother, your grandmother has got five children. In with those five children, one has to always die. <laughs> What are these things? You must ask yourself, I'm not a pastor, he is a pastor, you are the theologians, you are the ones who know the Bible, man. What is this generational thing? So you bring up an interesting question. How do we deal with these generational things that we seem to have upon us as Batwana? People will say Batwana are lazy. What are we doing about that? I'm a business owner. Most of us will find that we will hire Zimbabweans. Why? There's a reason why we do this. Now we must be real. We must be real about this. But what is this thing that keeps on coming down the generations? What is that? What is this thread that is coming down? Where is it embedded? And how do we deal with that? You say you are a new creation through Christ. That's how you deal with this generational stuff here. But you have to be deliberate and call it out. To say, in my family line, my father was married for 20 years and divorced. His father was married for 20 years and divorced. What is this thing? I have identified it. Now I will pray so that this thing does not continue with me and does not continue with my children. The Bible teaches us that the Lord blesses how many generations? Right. So if you understand your calling as a business person, you have been called. I believe that my family is like a Joshua family. So my question is purpose-based. How did you know you are living in your purpose or in alignment with your purpose? 
because many of us are living purposeless lives. Again, how did you know that you had stepped into your purpose? What made you so sure? Or to say, yeah, me, and um, um, this is it. Or is it just a uh, go with the flow thing? Because, you know, yes. So what steps also did you take to identify your purpose? And how did you implement those steps? Because some of us are stuck in things, in spaces, in careers that are not really aligned with our purpose. I'll try and answer this very quickly. Um, when I was done with school, in fact, when I went to school, I was a brilliant student, did very well, um, and I decided that I was going to be a lawyer. Um, the world had never seen such a lawyer that was coming, so I enrolled <laughs> into law school. <laughs> I went into law school first year, was doing great, and I was I was interested in criminal law, by the way. And um, but then there was something that just didn't add up. Was eloquent in everything I could do, I could stand. You didn't want me to, you know, like put in arguments and, and stuff like that. I thought that was where God was calling me until God called me into ministry. I said, No, I'm not going to go into ministry. And then God, you know, how God persists in, in calling me. Then I found out one of the days I was involved in an accident, which was a uh, not to say that everyone should be involved in one for you to find your purpose. You know? um, so I was burnt by uh, boiling oil. My whole body uh, was burnt, and this life and my beard grows weird on this other side because my face was all messed up, and my chest was all bent up, and found myself in hospital. And while I was lying there in the hospital bed, God visited me, and I prayed a prayer. Ten of us in that ward. Uh, six of the guys died in the night, same night, and I knew I was going to die that night. I knew I was going to die. I remember making a prayer, God, if you heal me, I'll go and be a minister. I'll go and do theology. I'm not going to argue with you now. I'm going to go into ministry. And I did. And God healed me. And funny thing, God healed my face. He never healed my chest. And so I asked him, well, why? Why is it there? And he says, no, we need your face because you're going to stand in front of people. <laughs> But then, we need your chest when no one else is looking. When you take it off, you remember that you died that night. Ooh. And you belong to me now. So, Amen. it was a, a, a constant struggle. But here are five things quickly. Number one, um, when God calls you, it's, a, it's, a big, it's bigger than you. Yeah. Always. God is going to call you for something that you can do. He's going to call you for something that you can't do. So when God called me, my mom, we had a lot of money. A uh, millionaire kind of mom, you know, stuff said to me, my, my son is a lawyer. My son is not a pastor. So if you're going to be a pastor, you're going to pay for yourself. I said, well, where am I going to get the money? She literally deserted me. We're good, by the way, with my mom. Don't, don't, don't. But for that moment, she literally said, I'm not going to allow you. I'm not going to pay anything. You'll see yourself. I struggled. Went to Solusi. Things were not okay. You know how Solusi was like, having one meal a day and stuff. It was just crazy. But then the assignment is always bigger than you. And when the assignment is bigger than you, then you know that God has called you. Number two, people started falling off around me. Those that I thought we were going to make it yeah. together. They started, you know, falling off. And then I remembered a very simple principle. The guys you went to preschool with are not the same guys you went to grade seven with. Mm -hmm. The guys you went to high school with are not the same guys that you were with in, 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 in primary school. The guys you wrote your matric with, can you see people are falling? Mm -hmm. Are not the same guys you started with at school. And by Nobody else is there. And life is a way to prune everybody else. So this is how you know. When you begin to see people falling from your purpose and vision, you know that God has called you. And I know I said, Father, I will just say this one last one. The other thing that was very, very important, or that is very, very important when God is calling you, is affirmation. Affirmation is when, when, when you stand to do what you do. I'll use myself as an example. You don't... Um, how is this word? You do not, you do not use your effort to accomplish it. It's not you. It's it's God steps in at the time when you're about to give up, and this is where you know God has called you for that thing. Because if you're going to go and do it out all through your power and help, then you're like Uza. You're using your own strength. Yeah. But when it calls you to draw deeper and go and, and and cast your net even deeper on the other end, then you know God 
has called you because he comes to affirm you so affirmation comes through the word of god that's number one number two it comes through um uh, the 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 affirmations of the heart you can fill it and then thirdly it is affirmed by other people without you even questioning you you you, you can tell that here god has called me for this you don't have to struggle you don't have to uh you know to pick the water and, and you're drowning for you to 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 accomplish the, the the process may be difficult but the affirmation like he said the process of getting that tender was so difficult because you make a decision and people are like you're, you're so dumb you're losing this money but then when it finally comes it the answer is simple it had to be god and no one else it had to be god and no one else so you begin to then walk in the newness of life having that knowledge of the experience of how god has carried you so still white says we have we have nothing to fear for the future and we say it's okay christ will be your husband christ is your husband but you need somebody to tell you hey baby how are you we are social beings that's how we are wired by god the creator but first you need to know who your God is and how awesome he is and how wealthy he is and how uncompromising he is and then you do that for you and to say who I am and these are my standards these are my boundaries set them communicate them anybody who trembles on your boundaries is not worthy to be in your presence yes. mm. as as women sometimes you are told ah my your standards are too high rather be alone than be with a man who doesn't know how to treat a woman oh. god yes. said we are going to be first and not last yeah. we're going to be the head and not the tail for as long as we do not take it in and choose it for ourselves the world is not going to choose it for us let us know who we are let us know our worth yeah. and let us know that we are not going to compromise the few times that i have compromised i was like we're going to get about tragedy oh mom is ugly he doesn't dress well and then he doesn't treat me well it was never weapon in all the occasions yo 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 it's not worth it don't misrepresent god don't misrepresent yourself allow your standards to be as high as they are and also start with you and be that which you want the other person to get in you so start with the mirror and know that you have a god who is in a carving business and work in partnership with him collaborate with him and continue to grow day Even though I didn't know they had chosen. So I was like, no, I'll stay. Then in form, it was in, in, in 2004.